Welcome to launch commentary for the Space Research Center set of missions. Our first launch is due to take place in a minute and it is a modified Saturn V rocket that will bring the SRC station itself into low Earth orbit. Following this launch there will be a Falcon 9 launch that will carry up extra station keeping fuel and a docking extension and then the shuttle launch that will bring the crew to the station. We're currently T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, ignition and liftoff. We've got liftoff of the Saturn V. And the rocket has cleared the tower. We're T plus 30 seconds, altitude 1.5 kilometers, speed 103 meters per second. Telemetry is good, pitch and roll programs are good. It's a cloudy day on the Cape here. T plus 65 seconds. We are 9 kilometers in altitude, 348 meters per second, and 1.2 kilometers downrange. Vehicle has now crossed the beach. We're T plus 95 seconds, altitude 23 kilometers, 718 meters per second, and 7 kilometers down range. Guidance affirms that we look good. It's a nice view of the cape from the rocket as it gets above the cloud layer. We've got T plus 2 minutes and 15 seconds. We are 60 kilometers in altitude, 1.6 kilometers per second in speed, and 34 kilometers downrange. We're preparing for first stage cutout and separation. First stage is out. Second stage is a go. Second stage is reported nominal and and Saturn V continues. Five J two rockets burning roughly five mega newtons worth of thrust. Okay, telemetry shows one hundred twenty eight kilometers, two point two kilometers per second, and we are one hundred eighteen kilometers down range. It's worth noting at this point that the Saturn V has been modified. The third stage is 
6 meters rather than the normal 6.6 .6 meters. It is also shortened because the station is being delivered to low Earth orbit and we do not need the fuel that would be required to carry a mission to the moon. The station itself has a mass of roughly 60 tons and uh, there you see it in the fairing. We have multiple cameras on the station and it has extensive docking ports for further extensions. There is a research lab, crew quarters, and accommodations for a total of six crew members aboard the station. Uh, the current solar array configuration is minimal and will have to be uh, modified in future launches. Fairing separation. And there they go. Though the SRC is a relatively small station at this point at 60 tons, that is more than we would be able to put into orbit on a Saturn V rocket on a single launch if we were to send it to the moon. It, to the moon, it would require two launches to launch this particular station because the payload capacity to the moon for a Saturn V is 45 tons, while the mass of the station is 60. However, there are plans to put a SRC-style station in orbit around the moon, but uh, those will have to take place after this one is successful, and that is still to be seen. There are some concerns at this point about the altitude that the Saturn V is setting the station at. We are a little bit high at this point on the telemetry. Uh, we are currently 232 kilometers in altitude, 2.6 kilometers per second in speed, and 341 kilometers downrange. Accommodations on the SRC include at least a hundred days worth of food, water, and oxygen for the crew, for a crew of six. Uh, when the shuttle is docked to the station, those accommodations might be a little bit stretched. However, we have a resupply vehicle ready in the form of the, the capsule atop the Falcon 9 launcher, which we will see in the following launch. Engineers still keeping an eye on the telemetry readings as we continue to be a bit high. However, uh, regardless of where the station is set, the rockets on the station itself will be able to adjust its altitude and uh, orbit accordingly. Currently we're reading 288 kilometers in altitude, 3.4 kilometers per second in speed, and 597 kilometers downrange. You can see Cuba, Haiti, most of the Caribbean in sight, Florida of course prominently in practically every view. Still keeping an eye on things. Uh, we are 309 kilometers now, 3.9 kilometers per second in speed, 866 kilometers downrange, and it's looking like this particular station will end up a little bit high and we'll have to adjust for that. The planned height for the station was 450 by 450 kilometers. Uh, minimum, the minimum set was for uh, one and a half hour orbital period. So that would have been around 240 kilometers by 240 kilometers. The total time for the second stage is six minutes, and we're well into that at this point.
burn continues to be nominal. The, the pitch settings earlier in flight were probably to blame for the current trajectory issues. There is of course no risk that this uh, particular payload will fail to reach orbit given the, the third stage is overabundance of fuel. As we see the southeast of the United States uh, past the horizon. And the single J-2 rocket on the third stage waiting patiently for its own lighting. Currently looking at 366 kilometers in altitude, 5.8 kilometers per second in ground speed, and 1300 kilometers downrange. for a second stage out in 10 seconds. Second stage is out. And second stage separation, third stage is good. Third stage thrust is nominal. Camera is showing the second stage descending back into the atmosphere. At this point, Lantry is showing 403 kilometers in altitude, 6.1 kilometers per second in ground speed, and 1700 kilometers downrange. For the follow up shuttle mission, the crew will be Jebediah Kerman, Bill Kerman, Bob Kerman, Ray Cott Kerman, Genfield Kerman, Dowell Kerman, and Jorhat Kerman. Of those, Raycott, Genfield, Dowell, and Jorhat will be the new station crew. Jed, Bill, and Bob will return to the surface with the shuttle. Their return is not uh, expected for a number of days, however. A special docking adapter has been placed in the shuttle bay in order to allow the shuttle to dock with the station. However, because of safety concerns uh, preceding the shuttle mission, uh, a Falcon 9 mission will take place in order to extend one of the docking ports on the station in order to make sure there's sufficient clearance. That mission will also carry extra fuel uh, in the form of hydrazine, UDMH, and N204. We're preparing for a third stage cutout now. And that's expected in 10 seconds. And there it is, third stage cutout. And the, the Space Research Center is now in orbit. And it does not look like the ideal orbit, however, let's uh, do things one at a time. And first we need to separate the third stage from the station. So waiting on that. Beautiful view though. Hmm. 
mission control checking for clearance to separate the third stage and there it is third stage has been separated trying to get another camera view here ah there we go the third stage will, of course, uh, have a steadily decaying orbit and return into the atmosphere, will burn up. The station itself has station keeping rockets. However, we would be expecting those to be firing at this point. Um, there seems to be some issue here. We're waiting for word on that, what that is. The solar panels seem to be deploying. We have one solar panel deployed. Okay, report is that the tanks with the required the fuel for the station keeping, the UDMH N204, as well as the hydrazine, the tanks are not pressurized at this point. For some reason, pressurization has failed. Also, uh, one of the solar panels is failing to deploy. Uh, looks like the heat radiators. Um, we saw one of the heat radiators deploy. Those are supplementary and not critical at this point. The spent third stage is floating away, safely at least. But it looks like the Falcon 9 launch to follow will be even more critical than we initially thought, as at least it will bring up a pressurized tank to contain the and ensure the fuel feed for the rockets and it also has its own rockets that it can use to boost the station if necessary. Well, so we will have to leave it here. The next launch you'll see is the Falcon 9 launch and we'll begin with the countdown from from the controllers of that launch. And so we'll begin at uh, T minus 15 seconds on that launch, and hopefully it will be able to restore this station to its proper orbit. So this is Launch Commentor, uh, Launch Commentary, uh, signing off. And welcome to launch commentary for the Falcon 9 launch, the space station, and uh, we seem to have a problem here. Uh, definitely on the camera we caught sight of a single engine falling off, and we're trying to confirm the situation here. Uh, yes, it looks like the Falcon 9 has lost an engine, however, it uh, has engine out capability and so it will continue on to orbit. We are still a go for orbit at this point, despite the loss of a single engine. Uh, there will have to be reviews done on what happened with that launch. However, uh, it is fortunate that uh, Falcon 9 is designed for not exactly that eventuality, but similar eventualities, I suppose. So we, we, we continue. The first stage and second stage will burn for a bit longer than normal in order to compensate for the loss of the engine. Currently passing through the cloud layer here and beginning to make our turn. First stage propulsion, uh, except for that single engine, is nominal. Pitch program is proceeding, though there are some concerns after the issues we had with the Saturn V launch.
T plus 110 seconds, altitude 24 kilometers, speed 785 meters per second, and that's nominal at this point. So it's looking like our trajectory is good. We'll continue to check in. Nice view of the cape. Okay, we're now at 2 minutes and 25 seconds and 33 kilometers in altitude, 887 meters per second, ground speed, and 17 kilometers downrange. Second stage engine, waiting for its part. Vehicle's flying down the nominal at this point. Okay, first stage is out and waiting for the second stage lighting and there it is. First stage separation, second stage is lit and we continue to be a go. Now looking for a payload separate, uh, fairing separation and there it is. Okay, the antenna on the payload will deploy in order to ensure communications. And at 112 kilometers in altitude, 2.4 kilometers per second in speed, and 137 kilometers downrange. Stage 2 propulsion is nominal. Falcon power systems are nominal. Weather on the Cape seems to be getting a little bit harsh, and uh, there will be concerns about delays for the shuttle launch. Okay, uh, T minus 5 minutes and 20 seconds. The vehicle is 209 kilometers in altitude. 3 kilometers per second in ground speed and 408 kilometers downrange. Vehicle continues to fly down the nominal trajectory. The views we've been getting on these launches have been spectacular, I think. Okay, telemetry reports 269 kilometers altitude. 4.1 kilometers per second in speed and 780 kilometers downrange. The critical aspect of this mission is, of course, docking. Uh, the actual Falcon launch uh, seems to be going superbly, but docking with the station will be will be a challenge in its, uh, its unexpected orbit at this point. Ok, 
Okay, we're uh, getting close to orbit here. And we've got 294 kilometers in altitude, 5.7 kilometers per second speed, 1260 kilometers downrange. Now at 300 kilometers altitude, 7 kilometers per second ground speed, and 1560 downrange. Uh, lost the signal for a sec there. Up, oh, we have engine cutout of the third stage. Uh, second stage, excuse me. Okay, waiting for second stage separation. Okay, second stage separation, and it looks like the power systems on the payload are good. The power system on the payload is good, and the capsule is off on its way to the station. We'll return to you as it makes its burn for the station. Okay, the station refueling capsule is reported to be making its burn to the station and a slight inclination change as well. And so it's now adjusting its orbit to match that of the stations. Preparing for video of the approach to the station, and here it is. The capsule is approaching the Space Research Center at 0.2 meters per second. It is within range of joint operations so the controllers of the station and the controller of the capsule are in coordination at this point. Just a reminder, this capsule is absolutely necessary in order to bring the station into an orbit that will be reachable by the space shuttle. Currently its orbit is high, the space shuttle could theoretically reach it, however it would stretch the capabilities of its OMS fuel. It might be necessary to overload it with fuel if it remains in this orbit. Everything looks to be in order at this point. And indeed, the capsule has docked successfully with the station. Uh, the capsule cannot extend the additional solar array, however, it will be able to make the altitude adjustment that will be necessary for the station to receive the space shuttle. The docking extension will also help the space shuttle to dock so that uh, the main body of the station does not have to extend as far into the space shuttle's payload bay. Uh, thus mitigating any possibility of damage. So we'll return to you with the shuttle mission that will bring the Kerbinauts into orbit and we expect them to be able to resolve the solar panel issue and begin operations at the Space Research Center. So we'll return to you with that mission uh, after a brief intermission. Welcome to live commentary of the shuttle mission to the Space Research Center. The shuttle will be underway in one and a half minutes. We are T minus one minute and 30 seconds. And at that point, Jeb, Bill, Bob, Raycott, Genfield, Dowell, and Jorhat will be on their way to the space station. We are in our final countdown. Everything is a go. The weather looks fine. 
We have some spectacular camera views for you today. T minus one minute. Casual banter between mission control and the astronauts as we get to T minus thirty seconds. T minus twenty seconds. T minus fifteen. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and lift off. Lift off of the space shuttle to the space mission center. K shuttle has cleared the tower. We have the internal view of the instruments inside the cockpit. This is Jeb's view at this point. Okay, T plus 34 seconds. The shuttle is 2.1 kilometers in altitude, 134 meters per second in velocity. It is making its roll. To change its orientation. Okay, roll program complete. And we continue on. Five point four kilometers, two hundred and forty four meters per second. Passing the cloud layer here. SRV propulsion is looking good. Space shuttle main engines are nominal. Jeb is looking at uh, his fellow fellow astronauts right now, Bill and Bob. They are looking like they're good. G forces in the space shuttle are mild at this point. So three reads 10.4 kilometers in altitude, 381 meters per second in speed, one kilometer downrange. Saw rocket boosters are expected to separate at 44 kilometers. Currently, we are at 17 kilometers altitude, 554 meters per second, 3 kilometers downrange. We're at uh, 25 kilometers altitude, 758 meters per second speed, seven meters, uh, seven kilometers, excuse me, downrange. K 
a drill program has placed the shuttle in orientation for SRB separation. The SRBs burn for a total of 2 minutes and 3 seconds before separating. Once the thrust from the SRBs is below a certain point, the program will give the release signal. And we have them turn out on the SRBs and the shuttle continues on with its main engines going to full throttle. Barely glimpse the readings on the instruments on the panel in front of Jebediah Kerman. Space out and main engines are nominal. Telemetry is good. The key to this mission is going to be the docking. We've seen the shuttle launch before, we've seen the shuttle land before, but we haven't seen this shuttle dock with a station before. And docking with a station in Earth orbit is no trivial matter. We had to have the launch window very precise. Uh, the, the station was put into an inclined orbit, uh, 28 degrees, uh, match, uh, at its uh, peak matching the latitude of Cape Canaveral and so we had to wait for Cape Canaveral to pass under the orbit of the station once again before launching and that is currently the situation here I, I am my there aren't any expected significant plane changes in uh, in Earth orbit this time, and that's a good thing because plane changes are extremely expensive in terms of delta v. There will be a minor, minor uh, inclination adjustment in order to match the station with the second OMS burn. So while the shuttle is burning for orbit, it will also make the inclination adjustment. The station is currently in a relatively low orbit. The adjustment, it was decided to put it into a 1 hour and 30 minute orbital period, so the minimal orbital period for, uh, for the station, and allow the shuttle to dock a fit like that. So the shuttle will actually go into a high orbit and then uh, descend in order to match the altitude of the station. The shuttle's supply of hydrazine will be more than enough to to ensure docking with the station. There is ample margin for that. If necessary, the station itself can refuel the shuttle. It has fuel supplies for hydrazine as well as OMS fuel. Since we can read off telemetry data from the front panel whenever we see the cockpit view, I'll forego giving further telemetry data. Currently the shuttle systems are nominal, trajectory is ideal. And we see Florida ever present in our view. Currently passing the Bahamas.
Raycott, Genfield, Dowell, and Jorhat are in a crew canister. However, we've been advised not to switch to a crew canister as it may disrupt guidance. So we are not getting a crew canister view here. And that's the reason for that omission. As we get another cockpit view here, we see that uh, the Kerbals, well, seem to be quite excited at this point. No problems and no worries there. Our translators inform us that Jeb was making certain remarks about the blandness of the forward view here. Uh, complimenting the instruments, however, the, the background is a little bit dull. There have been concerns about the configuration of these, this particular panel, and I, I believe the engineers will have to look into that situation. Clearly this is not how this should be looking. However, the data looks good, and we see an altitude of 333 kilometers on the forward view here, and a velocity of 6.3 to 6.4 meters per second, uh, kilometers per second there. We are approaching orbital velocities here and we should be expecting the space shuttle main engines to go out as the external tank fuel is expended. Very close to orbit here. Periapsis less than a thousand kilometers. Less than a thousand kilometers negative that is. And there we go. So now we're waiting for clearance for external tank separation. There we have it. External tank is away. And the space shuttle will now wait for clearance for OMS burn 1. And it's OMS burn 1 to clear the external tank. Okay, the shuttle is now waiting for apoapsis in order to burn to complete its orbit. It will be in a very high orbit as, as specified. And that's, that's fine because it will be a slow orbit and the station is currently behind the shuttle. Okay, we're back with you and getting ready for OMS burn 2. Here we go, the second OMS burn, and this will allow the shuttle to make orbit and also adjust inclination to that of the space station. After that, uh, the space shuttle will make a single orbit around the planet as the space station catches up to the space shuttle, and then at periapsis, the space shuttle will burn once again in order to drop its orbit so that it can meet up with the station. The burn to drop orbit will is expected to be a short one. And will likely occur relatively close to the station outside the station's safe range. This is an unusually long OMS burn right now. And that's due to the unusual orbit matching that is taking place. 
as we get more experience with uh, meeting up with the space station. Okay. And I have my explosive. I want to let your Just standard transmissions from the crew to ground control at this point. Sounds like the OMS engines are decreasing in thrust and we're getting close to the fulfillment of the desired maneuver. And the space shuttle is in orbit. The space shuttle is currently in orbit and in an orbit that is well suited to match the space station, the, the Space Research Center, the SRC. Okay, we have uh, engine cut off on the OMS engines and the bay is open. So you can see the cargo bay open with the crew capsule and the docking facility. Of course the space shuttle has to open its bay doors in order to vent heat and so the bay doors allow the heat to radiate so that the shuttle does not overheat. Okay, the shell is reportedly currently making the burn to match orbits with the space station. So this is the burn to drop the orbit of the shuttle to match that of the space station. We can see the apoapsis is declining for the shuttle. an external view would be good at this point. Ah, there we go. Shuttle continuing to make adjustments as it approaches the station. Those are currently the RCS rockets firing. Waiting to see the station in view. With the space station currently in view, we'll pause as the shuttle is now in holding in holding position outside the station's safe zone. Okay, we're back as the shuttle approaches the docking port on the Space Research Center and we are currently over Baja, California. The approach to the station looks to be a bit quick, but there is expected to be another holding position before actual docking. Currently past the uh, Gulf of California, now floating over what looks to be Mexico. Patiently waiting for the docking to take place.
The station itself is of course currently automated, it does not have steering capabilities or anything of that sort, or there at least there is a significant delay in any commands with mission control between it and ground. So it is the shuttle making its approach. There is automated guidance on the station, however. Okay, we look to be slowing down our approach here. And now the station docking port is in the view of the cargo hold. There seems to be some slight rotation in the vehicles. Yes, uh, as you can see from this angle, the vehicles have rotated a bit. Mission Control is waiting for word from the astronauts about this situation. Currently still looks good for docking though. looks to be currently holding, waiting for more information about the orientation situation. Word from the crew seems to be that they uh, they are confident in their ability to to dock despite the uh, slight rotation. But of course, there are safety requirements here. Okay, the the crew is finally cleared to proceed with docking at this point. Yeah, order. The rotation situation seems to be severe. That message from the crew seemed to indicate some consternation with the alignment here. Or or well, the way things are rotating. And indeed, they're going to plan to back away, so we'll return to you uh, when they make a new attempt. And here we are, still over Mexico. And we're once again approaching the station. Remember, the shuttle is much more massive than the station. So this is a tricky docking. Okay, looks like docking is good. The thrusters on the station should be shut down momentarily as everything is stabilized. And currently 
going over Central America, past Guatemala and into Honduras here, as the shuttle has successfully docked to the Space Research Center. And we should be, we are currently awaiting word of solar panel deployment as we see the astronauts uh, getting ready to go here. Yes, they, they look quite ready to get to work. And we also expect an EVA, I believe, from Jebediah Kerman to survey the station to make sure that it uh, reached orbit intact and all systems are safe. So uh, Jeb is preparing for his EVA. It looks like the space station solar array is fully deployed now. So it's got its heat radiators and solar panels fully deployed. So just waiting for Jeb to give the station a good look to make sure everything is a-okay. That's the Gulf of Mexico in view right now. Cuba, Jamaica in the distance. And we are currently over Honduras, it looks like. Still waiting word from Jeb. Okay, it looks like Jebediah Kerman is ready to go in the airlock right now. And we should see him emerge. Ah, oh, there we go. Jebediah Kerman. Currently EVAing in space above Central America. As usual with Jeb, Mission Control gives him wide latitude. And we do expect him to take a good look at the view before he gets on with his work. No reports yet from Jeb. Seems to be unusually quiet. Looks like he's positioning himself close to the docking mechanism here. I don't believe the docking mechanism was part of the scheduled checks, but if Jeb wants to take a look at it, that's... Well, he's not really taking a look at it, is he? He seems quite focused on, on the planet, on Earth. Yes, it, it does look like he's just uh, taking in the view at this point. And I don't think we can blame him. Life signs are nominal for him. Heart rate is good. Uh, we have people in mission control monitoring all of his life signs, so they report no problems there. And uh, he seems to have found his, himself a place to gaze upon the Earth. And perhaps at this point we will we will leave him and uh, break off this uh, commentary of the missions to the newly newly 
inaugurated Space Research Center. All right, so thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this coverage of the launch of the Space Research Center and the attendant missions to supply it and to uh, ensure that it is properly crewed. All right, so with that, uh, see you next time.